हरि ओम भज गोविंदम चांटिंग वर्सेस 16 टू 20 अग्रेवन हि हि पृष्ठे भानु रात्रौ चुकुक समर्पित जानु करतल भिक्षस्तरुतल वासहतदपिन मुंचत्याशापाशह कुरुते गंगा सागर गमनं व्रत परिपालन मतवादानं ज्ञान विहीन सर्वमतेन तिन्न भजति जन्म शतेन सुरमंदिर तरु मूल निवास हशैया भूतल मजिनम वास सर्व परिग्रह भोग त्याग कस्य सुखम न करोति विराग योगरतो वा भोगरतो वा संगरतो वा संगविहीनः यस्य ब्रह्मणि रमते चित्तं नंदति नंदति नंदत्येवा भगवत गीता किंचिदधीता गंगा जललव कणिका पीता सकृद पियेन मुरारी समाच्चा क्रियते तस्य यमेन नचर्चा सहना बबतो सहना ओ मनतो सह वीर्यं करमा वहे तेजस्विना वधी तमस्तुमा वित विषा वहे ओम शांति 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 वी हैव यू से लिव इन द प्रेजेंट but it doesn't happen as we are preoccupied. How do we remove our preoccupation? How do you get over your preoccupations in life? The effort to get over this preoccupation is the spiritual effort. Through the practice of the systematic spiritual efforts of karma, bhakti, jnanam. According to your constitution, when you practice, the vagaries of the mind drops. The dropping of that is where you will start living in the present. So the way to get over these preoccupations of the mind, there is no, no particular technique. It's not that you do this, from today you do this, you will start having this preoccupation gone. No. Overall, you have to practice the spiritual disciplines. When you practice those disciplines, the consequence of that is, Preoccupations, the mind drops. What is this karma, karma yoga, bhakti yoga, jnana yoga, whatever it is, karma, whatever you understand as bhakti. Karma, in the very simple terms, unselfish action. Bhakti is devotion towards the higher, you know, identification with the higher. It's called bhakti. Jnanam is trying to digest the higher values of life, higher understandings of, of life. That's called Jnana. So as you keep gaining that knowledge and this devotion and 
action through disciplined action disciplined emotion disciplined thoughts you drop your preoccupations which is a consequence there is no direct effort directly you cannot say that i am going to do this as a result of which preoccupations will go there is no specific techniques this is a general rule so once you practice that these things will go off automatically yeah. now coming to the text bhajagovindam shankara has been explaining how do we deal with the desires what are the wrong methods of dealing with desires how you work on that first one set of people work with the external show externally practice fake it till you make it that's their philosophy this is one group then you have the second group of people who try to handle their desires through this indulgence through experience indulgence in the sense through experience you want to have an ice cream no just have it finish it off why unnecessarily go on this is a typical householder mentality what what is referred as grihastha mentality then we have the third person is is where we were standing this is where he says do it by physically restraining from that because in the presence of the object only your desire gets a chance to get triggered that is his belief that's why in a, you know a sanyasi can afford to relate to everyone except his family members what what is what is what is wrong in that you know you no know, purvashrama wife if she were to come to see that sanyasi she will not be allowed they say no 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 i will not see you say, why you why you should not see her because the moment i see what will happen lot of people say as long as i am not seeing the bottle no thought of drinking comes but the moment i see the bottle the moment i see the advertisement is enough the billboard i see or somebody drinks uh, in the movie you see a movie a fellow that's why you know they put a caption there now smoking is injurious to health drinking is injurious to health don't do don't do what is it sir this is the problem the thing is so long as that object is not in front of me that desire in me is not triggered the moment that object comes in front of me my desire flares up therefore they think what the way to handle desire is never be in the presence of the object so what do you do take sanyas and go go to himalayas in the olden days nowadays you can't go to himalayas nowadays what you do go and join some ashram that's all you know where you don't get this triggers our shankara says no still the band of desires will not leave adapina munchatya shapasha is yet the band of desires will not leave it will still be with you you can't escape so how do you deal then so you cannot do the first one you cannot do the second one will not help you to get over the desires because indulgence has its own consequences and when you take this physical renunciation what you are doing is you are not giving that opportunity that's about it but 
how long you can hold the objects appearing in your pre pre presence you see you can be in the himalayas for seven eight years first time you come down to the plains one fellow stamps on your feet what happens anger shoots up you know why seven years nobody came you got to walk an avenue road let's say how someone will not hit you somebody will bang against you someone will come and hit somebody will not allow you to carry your load there will be a then what triggering you know so when people are not given that opportunity that never comes up but then doesn't mean it has disappeared that's what ramtirtha gives a beautiful example he says these things were all like that cold stick and snake he says the himalayan valley you know ranges because of that you know winter season you know the snakes get struck by that cold it will lie as though it is dead it's alive it's not dead but it's not it doesn't move it's just there so the kids you know would take that snake and start playing with it and the moment that snake comes near warmth near fire little warmth it gets it comes back to life starts kissing again uh, ramtita says all these people are like that what is your personality goes into that sort of a hibernation that's all in the, that you know sometimes the systems goes to sleep you see all that you have to do is what just touch the pad just shake the mouse a little you touch the mouse the whole thing comes back to life again but for all practical purpose what is it the screen is blank so long as nothing is touching it the moment you touch everything comes back to life shankara says these people don't get rid of it please so there's no point in trying to practice all these things externally that physical renunciation will not help you chudala i have told you several times who have not heard they have to hear the story of chudala comes in yoga vasishta the king of kashi developed the scheme desire to realize so one day he called the ministers and said i am going to renounce the kingdom and i am going to the forest I'm going to do tapas to realize this brahman i want to get this self realization so i am going away so he gave up the kingdom and he went away and it became talk of the town you know everybody started talking every country you know neighboring country the kings and all those people have started talking about it hey it seems that you know king of kashi uh, like recently we saw no that british you know relinquished their uh, you know uh, status royalty status you know like that he relinquished and he just went away it became big news after a few years his wife who is chud chud chudala she is a brahmagnani right but unfortunately this man could not see his wife as a brahmagnani which is natural you know no husband will see the intelligence of wife it is not possible similarly no wife will trust her husband you know it's a law of nature nothing can be done no husband will accept the intelligence of his wife similarly this king also did not see his wife as brahmagnani and she knows that 
so she knew his sincerity but he is going in the wrong track you know so she wants to help him so what she does is she comes as a sanyasin form and one day when you are sitting and meditating you know she come she came that side and stood in front of him when she stood in front of him after meditation he opens his eyes he saw her standing he did a sashtang namaskar to her pranams you know husband is doing pranams to wife in 2020 we may not understand what is the meaning of it i am talking about yoga vasishta period okay about thousands of years back in those days you know wife is supposed to see husband as god incarnation now here the god is falling at the feet of wife and the wife is standing there and blessing him i bless you he says and then he gets up and says all the tapas that i have done has fructified today i have got my guru please guide me to realization he asks him who are you he says don't you know i am king of kashi who has renounced the kingdom and come to the forest he says you have renounced nothing and she walks out and this man looks you know he says what is it i have renounced my throne i have renounced my family i have renounced the 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 retinue that i had the richness that i had the palace i had the diamonds everything i had renounced and i have come to the forest now she says i have renounced nothing as he was thinking pondering his eye fell on the kutia you know he saw that he said yeah correct i renounced the palace but i did not renounce the i just replaced palace got replaced with the kutia now that's all it is therefore what I, what to do he burnt it and now no more kutia also nothing is there after few months she came again she said see now i have renounced everything she said you have renounced nothing he said what is that not renounced then he looked around he saw what he had a begging bowl with him this kamandalu he had you know a pair of clothes he had all that he threw it in the ganges and said ganga arpanam and he threw everything in the ganges and stood naked he said nothing yeah. of course she said that and she disappeared right again third time she appeared now this man had nothing he was just sitting and meditating he said i dropped that also now am i qualified for you know for for realization he said you have renounced nothing this man got if we were to be there we would have got annoyed with him with her you know but this man is so sincere you know his sincerity saved him he said what is that i am still carrying he said yes i still carry one thing possessing what is it the body he said let me give up this body also and he lit fire and he was about to enter like sita entering fire you know like that this guy is also about to jump into fire and destroy himself and when he is leading the fire and is coming around the fire three times you know she is standing there and watching the whole scene unperturbed can you imagine the husband is about to jump into fire the wife is standing there and watching the whole scene a fascinating personality he is not doing anything this man you know sikidvijan this guy is about to jump he said stop what are you doing he said yeah this is my last possession i give up this also then what complete renunciation he said wait 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 i only asked you what are you doing he said yeah i am going to jump in fire okay what will happen
i'll be burnt okay then what then only my ashes will be there he gave the loose ball he said you idiot did you not realize even after your death you want to claim what my ashes hmm? you are gone right but still you claim what the ashes should be mine as long as you are carrying that no matter what you possess you are still the same plane only no difference drop that possessiveness man that mind 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 drop that that is renunciation where is that and where is this this is physical renunciation like sikidvijan you know dropping the things saying i don't want this i don't want that Yes, that's not going to be helping you at all. Yes, so renunciation also will not help. So you can't behave like an external show, nor can you behave like a householder, nor can you behave like a sannyasi. Out. Showing off, ruled out. Householder formula ruled out. sanyasi formula ruled out hey what else can be done he gives one more he says try this method there is one more group of people who try a different method you know there is a fourth group a fourth group is what he is giving in verse 17 kurute ganga sagara gamanam व्रतपरीपालन अथवा धन ज्ञान विहीन सर्वमतेन मुक्ति न भजति जन्मशतेन कुरुते गंगा सागर गमनम व्रत परिपालन अथवा धन ज्ञान विहीन सर्वमतेन मुक्ति न भजति जन्मशतेन one proceeds where ganges meets ocean strictly observes vows or is charitable a hundred lives thus bereft of knowledge is no way to liberation by all beliefs sarvamatena sarvamatam is all systems of philosophy all systems everywhere the rule is same he says now he gives a beautiful one see this proceeds where ganges meets ocean ganga sagara gamanam where the ganges calcutta referring to you know near calcutta you go there you know ganges meets the ocean or for that matter any river you know this is considered to be a very very sacred uh, place so people go for pilgrimage now today there is no such thing called pilgrimage what we have today is called tourism it's not pilgrimage you know there is a difference between pilgrimage and tourism tourism is what you pre book your accommodation see you book in a place so when you when you go there straight you go to the hotel straight you go to the hotel stay there take you know relax and then next day morning book a cab the taxi wala will take you, you go to the place do whatever they say you know you have to do there take a dip and come back and have shower again why because the water is not you know good there so what do you do take a dip there and then come back this is not pilgrimage pilgrimage is to go to a place without any planning you don't plan you just go that's all like lot of people you know go to temples also like that 
I went to Madurai for a wedding. And the Muhurtam time is what? Early Muhurtam. So the wedding gets over in the morning, 8 30, 9 o'clock. Wedding is over. After that, what to do? Because you are trained to catch this only in the evening. So after morning, 9 o'clock to evening, sir, 5, 5, 5 o'clock, what are you going to do? And that fellow says, What? Let us go to that Meenakshi temple, have a darshan of Meenakshi and come back. And you think you will get Punya. That is not Punyam, please. You won't get anything. In fact, there's a good chance of you getting Papa. But definitely no Punya you will get. You know, when you go to temple, they say, no, you get some Punya. That should be like this. I go to Madurai temple. Incidentally, I see my relative. That is okay. You can't say, I go to my relative's house. And they don't know how to entertain me in Madurai, they take me to the temple. At Delhi, when you go, how they entertain you? Agra, isn't it? They take you to the tomb. In Madurai, there is no tomb. Therefore, why they take you? To the temple. That's entertainment. That is not pilgrimage. Pilgrimage is from the beginning you decide that I am going to that place for this purpose. He's talking about that. And then he says, Vrata Paripalanam. Paripalanam is a strict observance. That's how the king is supposed to manage the state. The king, the, the, the Raja, Paripalanam. He does that Paripalanam. What is, what is he doing, sir? He strictly observes the entire state. Whole country he observes, controls. You control like that your vratam. Vratam means the results. Your vows. You take a vow. You strictly follow that. No compromise is one. Atava or dhanam, charitable. Wait, our idea of charity is what? Is very different. I don't want to go into that because people get, get annoyed with me when I explain that. You know? uh, when I start explaining what is charity according to the scriptures, people get angry with me. You know? So, whatever you think as charity, I say it's okay, you do it. Okay, charity. Now, what is the lifestyle of this person? And Shankara says beautifully here. Not uh, Shankara, this verse is supposed to have been given out by Sureshwaracharya, another disciple of Shank uh, you know, Shankara, of the most learned disciple of Shankara is this Sureshwaracharya, who is also popularly known as Vartikakara. Vartikakara. You know, Vartikam means verse commentary on the commentary. That's called Vartikam. Bhagavad Gita is there. For Bhagavad Gita, Shankara wrote a Bhashyam. Right? That on that Bhashyam, there is a commentary. That's called Vartika. And Sureshwara has written a Bhashya, you know, Vartikam, verse, com, you know, commentary on this Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, Bhashya. Shankara wrote a Bhashya for that Upanishad, Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. For that, Sureshwara wrote a commentary, 12,000 verses, Vartikam. Huge text that is. And Taitri Upanishad also he has written one. Then he has written one very popular text in Vedanta literature, which is his original work. Naishkarmya Siddhi is another, another test, text. 
Naishkarmi Siddhi is the text written by Sureshwara Chira. He is a very learned person. He is the one in the Purvashrama. Name of him is the Mandana Mishra. Mandana Mishra is the disciple of Kumarila Bhatta. They followed the Purva Mimamsa, meaning ritualists. You know, they follow this Vedic rituals. And Shankara had a very popular Vada with, with Mandana Mishra. It's a very, very popular one. You know, for which Mandana Mishra's wife was appointed as a judge. Bharati, his wife, Mandana Mishra's wife, was kept as a judge. You can imagine what is the status given to women of those days. Because there is a, there's a popular belief we people have, you know. In our culture, we never allowed women to get educated. It's a very wrong idea. In the Rig Veda, which is the oldest text that we have, there are over and about 30 rishis who were women. Who had given out the Vedic mantras. In the Vedic period, even women were practicing Vedic chanting at that time. There was no restriction. You are born as a human being, you have to study. And we have, it's there in the, in the Rig Veda. Those who are interested can Google and search and find out. It's there. So those who are interested can see there. And even in the Rig Veda and then the Ejur Veda, the Satarvana Veda, we have a lot of them. And lot, lot of, you know, women, you know, poets were there in Tamil also, which is again considered to be the oldest language. You know, it's not that, you know, women were not educated. Where many of them were very, very learned. This Mandara Mishra's wife is supposed to be very learned, actually. So in that vada, Shankara wins. So the rule is, the one who wins, the loser has to leave his belief and join the other one, become a Sishya. So that is how Mandana Mishra became the Sishya of Shankara. And when he became Shankara's disciple, Shankara gave him Sanyasa and Sanyasa Ashrama name is the Sureshwaracharya, who is the first Acharya of Shingeri Mat. We have here Shingeri, you know, the Mat's first Acharya is uh, the Sureshwar Acharya. Shankara appointed him, this one. So Sureshwara says, Kurute Ganga Sagara Gamana. But you can't, you can go there, you can't do this, all these things. Vrata Paripalana. Yes, yes. See, all these things are nothing but our. Prescribed in the Shastras. You are following the prescriptions given in the Shastras. The scriptures tell us to do all these things. For what? There is a reasoning. How the, how, what the position of this? Sir? The positioning we have to understand here very carefully. The first is, one is, is a general observation. What is it, sir? Every one of us is seeking infinite happiness, infinite freedom, absolute knowledge, immortality, bliss, whatever you want to call, you call. What you are seeking is infinity. Doesn't matter what you claim. In everything, we want infinity. Now, comes the things. Everyone wants infinity. That permanent happiness or that infinity achievement is possible only upon self-realization. 
okay self realization is possible only through spiritual knowledge self realization is not going to come to you by studying mathematics chemistry that will not give you self realization what will give you self realization is only the spiritual knowledge will give you and that's what he says here that's what atma bodha says bodhonya sadhane byohi sakshan mokshaika sadhana akasya vagni vagnyanam ina mokshona siddhi what is that is going to directly give you realization mokshasya sadhanam what is going to give you moksha is only that gnanam only that knowledge only that spiritual knowledge can give you this that spiritual knowledge is possible only through systematic study systematic education systematic teaching isn't it systematic study of the shastras and the systematic teaching by the guru whatever the case is both are same but one thing for sure what is it sir the spiritual knowledge is possible that gnanam is possible only through systematic knowledge systematic education systematic approach that systematic education is possible the study of the shastra is possible only when your mind is prepared to an unprepared mind systematic education is not possible like you have to study quantum mechanics what is required preparation is required you should have studied at least science in your university education if you have not studied science it is not possible for you to go to university what is required 12th standard you have to pass or you have to pass 12th standard what you, you should have passed 10th standard for 10th standard what is the qualification 9th standard back 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 you come you have to start from lkg that's how systematic education is so any systematic education necessitates the preparation i repeat everybody is seeking infinite bliss there there is no doubt no one can ask any doubt about it none of us have a doubt on that right everybody is seeking it that is for sure now when you can get it sir only with the spiritual knowledge that is possible only by knowledge you can gain that when you can gain that knowledge that knowledge is possible only through systematic teaching education systematic education is possible only by only to a to a prepared mind prepared personality prepared student to an unprepared student unqualified student unprepared mind the teaching is not possible and i say mind i am including intellect here okay you see collective usage here now a prepared mind means what sir a prepared mind can be possible how do you prepare that mind for that preparation only the scriptures had recommended this sort of spiritual disciplines what pilgrimage you know follow certain vows certain disciplines were given to us but the problem we have is by following the discipline we think directly it is going to give us mastery over the mind and realization no that will not happen 
this is where this disciplines comes into picture in the scriptures so what is sureshwara saying here sir by living a moderated life can you get realization not possible so through external show not possible by indulgence not possible by physically renouncing not possible then we have a fantastic formula which is what the current generation will be following maximum the first three we don't follow much at least the so called spiritual people the so called spiritual people today maximum falls into this category only what is it sir see too much only problem isn't it all of us say no you say see too much of involvement only problem little bit of attachment is okay little desire is okay uh, no 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 little you know possessiveness is okay i am very possessive about my child and that is okay i am very possessive about car a car you be possessive is wrong that is not correct but to be possessive about my child and ah, that is okay what is that from where that is coming that's what he is saying here don't take it that's what most of us you know prime officia when he says one thing little you probe you get a different idea here the little probing is what this is he says no 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 what he is saying is a life punctuated with certain disciplines that's called certain vratas we do this pilgrimages you go through charity you do why you do charity you know this is a very interesting question Quick, quick, I think there is somebody who wants to ask a quick, quick question. Pilgrimage. Reception procedure and purpose, please. Pilgrimage steps. I am not the right person to ask because I have never been on pilgrimage, and I don't organize this pilgrimage tour along. Uh, you have to ask those who organize that. i don't know about it but i can tell you the purpose is only this the pilgrimages help you to do one thing what is it sir that uncertainty with which you go about that is why today there is no pilgrimage i said you see like we say no aditi devo bhava a guest is not an atithi remember that atithi means a tithi tithi means day right what is a day today what's a tithi is what they ask the very you know traditional people ask that they don't ask what's a date what 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 is a tithi they ask means a day what is a day they say a tithi means no day means a person comes to the house without informing that's called atithi now to go to your own house you have to fix your own house you have you, that's not atithi please atithi devo bhava means a person comes without informing it's beautiful i say you know that's what they you know they ask a lady Olden days, you know, when the ladies, you know, go to the brides, you know, they find a girl for a boy. They ask cooking. What do you cook first? They ask. It's a standard question they used to ask in the olden days. Nowadays, nobody asks because they ask what uh, cooking. What do you cook first? Do you keep sambar first because now we have four, you know, burner stove. We have those days no four burner lah. There's only one, you know, stove only they had. That's all. That also with the firewood. So one by one only you have to cook. You can't cook parallelly four five items. 
you see so what do you cook first they say first thing you have to keep is what rice why any time the guest may arrive even if you are not having anything with you if rice is there means you can just mix it with a curd and provide them curd rice problem solved his hunger is quenched you see suppose if you say i have just you know kept palaya ready sambar is ready sir i have to put my rice after the fellow comes only i am going to start cooking rice means it like another 45 minutes so for that 45 minutes the guest is to be sitting with hunger of course he did not announce and come he did not inform without any information without any intimation he just walks in that is pilgrimage why so much of discomforts you volunteer to go through that's called a pilgrimage you will not know where you are going to stay you know a lot of people cannot sleep in a new place you know that i have seen people bringing their teddy bears pillows all that to the academy they bring a pillow with them they bring a teddy bear with them one fellow brought the mattress also with him you know he came to the academy to stay not that he was going to stay there for you know three years course all he is just staying there for two nights weekend only he is staying there two nights he is staying the fellow brought his mattress i was really surprised i said wow why he says poor fellow he says sir i cannot sleep in the things and it's not that you know the 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 mattress that we have those who have visited the ashram would know academy would know you know it's not just you know not like you know sleeping on the floor you know you got to be you know painful you are not used to it's really painful to sleep on the floor you know it's a very comfortable mattress what we use still that fellow says what no 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 i need that i want that now when you go on a pilgrimage without any booking or without any place without any money nothing you carry with you you just go in whose house what sort of facilities will be there who will accommodate you nothing you would know what sort of food what sort of rice they cook in their house also you don't know right whatever they cook in their house however they cook in their house they will serve now each house they cook in a different different way all this you put up for what this is the purpose of pilgrimage if this purpose is going to be defeated now you tell me where are we going for pilgrimage see those who go to the sabarimala also how they go sir go in the morning go to pamba from there gada 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 they go up have darshan come back for the night they are already in the planes to go there the comforts that we are demanding pilgrimages were designed only for us to move away from our comfort zone which is the is what we create in the house Now, when you we when we go there now, when you go to Tirupati or when you go to this, you know, Badrinath or this one, that one. That's why nowadays people started going even higher ups. Kedarnath, I have to go. I have to go to those such, you know, high altitude places where you get the taste of a little. This one, that's all. That also you have complete security now. You know, everything is taken care of. some of them carry the vegetables also bucket you know the the stove to this to that everything is carried with them so you don't have to worry about anything that is called tourism 
That's not pilgrimage. Sureshwara is talking about pilgrimage. Even if you go to pilgrimage, even if you are maintaining the vratas, the vows that you have taken, meaning vrata means this, vratam means I voluntarily renounce, drop, suspend that I like for a period of time. That's called a vrata. I repeat, vrata means I voluntarily abstain from what I like for a temporary period of time. Permanently, if you drop, that's called renunciation. See, you, you get a distaste to it, that's called vairagya. You are not having vairagya, nor are you having renunciation, tyaga. It is neither vairagya nor tyaga. Both are not this. This is vratam. Vratam means temporarily I live as though I am in that renunciation, tyaga, which I voluntarily take up. That's why we say ekadeshi vratam. What do you do during ekadeshi vratam? I am glad that, you know, you are all in Zoom. So, I, do, I don't get a chance to, uh, you know, get a reply. Otherwise, people give me reply like anything. You know? That is why, sir, what we do is, morning 6 o'clock itself, we will finish our breakfast. What do you eat? Means for next three days, you will not feel hungry. That's what they eat. You see, because Ekadeshi, Dwadeshi, you know, day before we had, today, Friday, yesterday, I am sorry. Yesterday, Yodashi, it's a very, very auspicious day yesterday. Dwadashi is a time you are supposed to eat. You know, Ekadeshi, you are not supposed to eat. Why you abstain from eating? You know, and we have started calling that as what? Cleansing the body. It's not for cleansing, please. It's not to detox. Nowadays, people do that for detoxing the body. Why? So much of toxins is there in the body now. So, you have to do tea, detox. Even then, it works. What does it say? You refrain from eating what you like, what you indulge most. Where is a maximum indulgence, sir, in life? Eating is a maximum indulgence. Height of indulgence in life is eating. You know, a lot of people go. They travel so far only to eat, isn't it? I had a fellow, he would come from Whitefield. From Whitefield, he will come to Gandhi Bazaar. For what? Vidyarthi Bhavan, Masal Dosa. I got to know that Vidyarthi Bhavan, Masal Dosa, after I Went to Gandhi Bazaar. Two years later, only I got to know. Oh, there is a Vidyarthi Bhavan hotel there. Supposed to be famous. You know this Brahmin's Cafe? I was in Basamagudi for about 10 years. 8 to 8 years or so, I was there in Basamagudi. I have never had breakfast there. I shifted from Bang, from Gandhi Bazaar, from Basavangudi, came to Kempapura. Next week onwards, I started having breakfast there. We would go all the way from here to eat there. Then we are just stones throw away from that place. For eight years, I lived there. Never been there. Very, very peculiar we are all, you know. Very funny we are. This is that. Eating. Tremendous thing. Ekadeshi Pratham means what? I will not have food on every Ekadeshi. Or some of them, you know, they say every Monday I will fast. You know, like that. A particular Pratham you take. Like the people, you know, those who have that, uh, you know, Sabarimala for 48 days. 
we follow a particular pattern you know we wake up early have bath in cold water walk without slippers it is so painful you know to the school i have to take a special permission from school you know when uh, when i had this one so i said i would not come fortunately they had blue you know tr 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 trousers so they were allowed to use blue color so i was using the blue color so is you know this he said no we don't shave we don't do this we don't do that so many and then you can't sleep in your bed you have to sleep on the floor so many things that's called a vrata what is it sir you voluntarily forego certain things that you like the most vrata same way dhanam charity charity is not distributing the things which is of no use to you today charity is what sir clearing the house you know when you are cleaning the house you do dhanam you know when it is no longer useful to you there no no that is not dhanam that which is so useful to you that you give that is dhanam now dhanam is another discipline given in the scriptures why if you are not parting what are you doing hoarding isn't it given a choice what we'll go on doing sir hoard 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 we go on accumulating 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 you never part you see now that hoarding pattern needs to be punctuated with what you punctuate sir with dhanam you punctuate it you get into a routine you see how do you punctuate it go to pilgrimage the routine gets gets a break there you get into a comfort you do only what you like you go on consuming your actions your 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 things are all what is liked by you so what you do punctuate it with what deny that deny the comforts deny the things to you that is the vrata so what are they doing sir they are balancing it's a lifestyle which is a balanced lifestyle even if you are leading a balanced lifestyle not according to us that is why sureshwara is very qualified to say that because sureshwara had practiced purva mimamsa also uttara mimamsa yet he knows both so he says in all schools in all beliefs in all mata in all philosophies of the world this moderated lifestyle will not grant you liberation not possible if you for carefully follow he says external show no contact no physical renunciation no balancing also no then if you follow that obviously a question will come to all of us say then what the heaven we can get this realization man moksha then how am i to handle this desires how are we to do it and he gives the method the wrong method he has given now let's see the right method because i don't want to close the class with only with the problem because last you know three classes has been only problem 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 okay what's the solution man and he gives a solution from 18 onwards suraman dira taru mola nivasa shayya bhutalam ajilam vasa सर्व परिग्रह भोग त्याग कस्य सुखम न करोति विराग सुरमंदिरतर मूल निवास शय्या भूतल मजिलम वास सर्व परिग्रह भोग त्याग कस्य सुखम न करोति विराग ड्वेलिंग अंडर ट्री इन टेम्पल 
sleeping on the ground wearing skin renouncing all possession and enjoyment to him will not dispassion bring happiness it's a it's an exclamation sort of it's a sort of a question he is asking yes. will not bring that obviously it will bring that's what it means to him to whom sir to whom the one who is dispassionate to the one who is dispassionate to him happiness comes automatic happiness means what go back to the previous one we we saw the steps the six steps we saw in the previous you know verse i explained that the first step is this everybody is seeking infinite happiness bliss that's what he is referring to to him will not dispassion bring happiness is referring to this upanishadic pro pro proclamation tena tyaktena bujidah magrada kasya siddha tena tyaktena bujidah may you enjoy through renunciation only through renunciation this happiness is possible and what is that renunciation is what he is explaining in the verse a man of renunciation is explained here beautifully dwelling under tree in temple the earlier all verse also he did mention here also he is mentioning now what is the difference there also he said you know temples you know living in temples here also he says dwelling under it under a tree in temple so where is he sir he is living under a tree which is in the temple you see now what is the difference this where thinking is it's a very tricky one living in temples means the previous verse in the structure called a temple he lives okay here the place where this man dwells is known as a temple that's a difference the previous verse there is a temple he goes and lives there in this verse he lives somewhere that place is called a temple other difference you know otherwise you you can't understand no, both looks very very similar no 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 when when they come down he lives where is he is living under a tree as far as he is concerned what it's just a tree that's all he is just laying there and that place will become as radiant as divine as a temple therefore it will appear to all of us as he is living in the under in the temple no he is living that place becomes a temple the previous one is the place that we call as temple this guy goes and sits there you see that is a difference living dwelling under tree in temple beautiful idea sleeping on the ground just now i said is very difficult you know to sleep on the ground what does it mean what is the meaning sleeping on the ground i still remember in the academy when we were uh, when we were studying we were building the uh, you know the girl, you know girls hostel you now the construction was going on 
and the roof you know they put they they don't have you know a straight roof they have a slanting you no know, it'll drop because of the rain you know we get a heavy monsoon there for three months now the monsoon started there it will just keep pouring the whole day you now for three months constant rain you know you will you will get so bugged with you know rain and after the three months to see sun you know it was such a pleasure he used to get you know says i saw one day i was sitting you know afternoon you know lunch i had and i was sitting in my balcony and i was seeing there are three fellows in the slope it is on that slope they were sleeping on the slope i said hey you turn around right it's not that you are just going to be sleeping all the time in the same position you keep shifting right if the fellow shifts a little this side fall for about 30 40 feet height will drop will drop means finished i got so scared you know and the fellow sleeping aram se there i thought you know that guy must be really a great man you know? like buddha he was sleeping because in the scriptures they say about buddha you know say he is known for this buddha when he sleeps he is in the same position whole night he doesn't change buddha you know that is what mahavishnu is have you ever seen mahavishnu in any other posture sleeping eternal sleep the fellow same position at once in a while you turn that side no isn't it nothing just how is it sir why is it he is able to sleep like that whereas i hear people are not able to sleep in an ac room with the with that you know tempur mattress the bed and this that and that fantastic place why you are not able to sleep how he is able to sleep means what only one thing that is he is physically tired correct when you get physically completely fatigued you get sleep when you get tired you get sleep automatic you are getting tired means what you are working intensely so a man of renunciation means what sir a man of renunciation is physically active that's what it means sleeping on the ground one dimension is this that is physically you have to be active for you to get sleep one two you get a sleep when he says sleeping he is sleeping not dreaming that's a difference second as dimension is when when you go to sleep you are not sleeping actually you are dreaming that is not sleep sleep means deep sleep in the scriptures when they say sleep they are referring to the deep sleep they don't mean the dreaming state or oh, dream state is a shadow that's all there is not a there is nothing in that it's useless because you are still active you get a deep sleep when do you get a deep sleep sir only when you are peaceful only a man who is mentally not agitated not disturbed dream is what a mental agitation that agitation is what is coming as dream to you you may remember upon waking up you may not remember upon waking up that's not the point i am not talking about that i am not referring to your 
remembrance of the dream you may remember many a times you will not remember or you will remember only for the first few seconds or minutes of waking up but that's not real dream please uh, that doesn't mean i don't remember it therefore i don't get dreams here. not necessarily but sleep means what sleep means dreamless sleep resting sleep means a dreamless resting state refreshing state when you wake up you are refreshed most of us when we wake up we are more tired you are not fresh when you wake up how do you know look at the child baby infants the moment they open their eyes they are active you start your activity after the second dose of coffee you need that stimulation you know some of them have to have black coffee why sir you need that much of stimulation means what that much of tiredness body is so tired eight and a half hours you have been resting how can you be tired you get tired of rest itself is it? that is not the case please resting means what no sleeping means rest completely there is no dreams a sleeping on the ground means he is having a deep sleep how he is able to have a deep sleep sir because of his unagitated mind mentally he is not agitated physically he is active both is implied here by this statement of sleeping on the ground a man of renunciation is our idea of renunci renunciate is what he doesn't do anything no externally he is very active so dynamic but internally how is he sir peaceful that's what krishna calls as yoga gives a beautiful de de definition for yoga samatvam yoga uchyate says in the chapter 2 the second chapter he defines what is yoga what is spiritual what is spiritual path who is a spiritual person he defines that spirituality means what sir samatvam means balance peaceful two verses later 50th verse he says yoga karma sukha kaushalam skill in action is called yoga one is peace is yoga another one is called a skill in yoga what is he saying all that he says is physically you are active but mind is restful for all of us what is renunciation ulta physically not doing mentally so dynamic mind is so dynamic body is not doing anything that's not renunciation please renunciation is physically so active mind restful that's what is referred here as sleeping on the ground beautiful ones description all that you have to fuse remember there are four points he gives here dwelling in the temple sleeping on the ground wearing skin renouncing all possession and enjoyment when all these four were to come together that is renunciation now when you have to have all these four mixed together now you can't have only one of that some of us will say oh, i am also getting a good sleep on the grounds like that man you know sleeping on the roof top now you can't say he is a he is a man of renunciation no 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 there are people who may be living in temple that doesn't mean anything no 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 by itself no wearing ding, you know skin no by itself it is not but when all the four come together 
there is renunciation that's what he is explaining here you know more we will see in the next class